Now on to our last flow chart in chapter 11, which is the hypothesis test flow chart. Now when we think about this, we've learned a lot of different hypothesis tests so far. We've learned five different ones, just like we've learned five different sample size formulas and five different confidence interval formulas. We've learned five different hypothesis tests. Okay, so now we got to keep them all straight. <laughs> and boy, is there a lot to keep straight. Okay, so let's look at the exam notes packet, and that can kind of help us. So we learned this one, which is for a single proportion. That was back in chapter 10. And then we learned this one for a single mean in chapter 10. And then we've learned this one in chapter 11 for the difference in two independent proportions. Then we learned the matched pairs difference for means, right? So the mean of the matched pairs differences. And then the difference in two independent means. Okay, so that's what we're going to write in our table so we can keep them all straight. So I'm, I think I'm going to actually put the proportion ones together because they kind of go nicely. So there was a single proportion test. So a single proportion test, which was section 10.2 when we learned it. And then the difference in proportions. So the difference of two proportions. Technically they're independent, but we'll just assume that. And that was section 11.1. All right, so those two kind of go together nicely because they're both going to be working with proportions. So they're going to have proportions, percents, it's going to have a survey or a poll, right? But it's going to be for one group. Whereas this one's going to have proportion, two of them, <laughs> percents, surveys, usually one survey. So, and again, poll can be another word used for survey, but it's for two separate independent groups. Right. Still important to know how um, to tell whether a group is independent or not. And it just occurred to me, I, again, just like I have with the confidence interval, I have these backwards. The tech is going to take more space than the normal. And rather than smudging it like I did on the confidence interval one, I'm just going to redo it. <laughs> so, so I'm sorry, I will change that um, so that they say normal here and tech here for future reference. I've actually already changed it in the electronic file. So sorry about that, but this will just be, be better. Okay, so this was for proportions, right? For one group, this is for two groups. Okay, so when we look at our hypotheses, so if you look at the null hypothesis for a single one, so let me go grab what that looks like. So back here, way back in chapter 10, 10 2, here it is, <laughs> it's that P is equal to P0, right? That would be your hypothesis. Okay, so that would be H naught P is equal to P0, where P0 is some given value, some known quantity. Whereas here, H naught is that P1 is equal to P2, that your proportion for group one is equal to your proportion for group two for these two separate groups, right? Here, you're actually gonna have to have a number. P0 is a number. That's something that a lot of students get confused on. So P0, oops, sorry, that, it's a hashtag, <laughs> it's a number, right? So P0 is a number, whereas P1 and P2 are actually just letters, and so is P. Now, to ensure normality, there is a slight difference between them. So if I look at the one for, from this ch section, section 10.2, it's N times P0 times Q0 has to be greater than or equal to 10. And I'm going to write that right on the page. So N times P0 times Q0, sorry, that's a zero, has to be greater than or equal to 10. Here, we actually need it for both groups, but we need something slightly different. We need N1 times P1 hat times Q1 hat to be greater than or equal to 10. And we need N2 times P2 hat times Q2 hat to be greater than or equal to 10. So you need both of those things. 
And again, that's on page, oh, and I never said what page it was. Oh, rats. Well, I'm going to say it now. <laughs> so this one, and again, what page it is will depend on what semester you're watching, just as it is with the other flow charts. So for me, the single test proportion is page 276. So you probably want to write that. So this is page 276 for this one. This one for the difference in two proportions is on page 278 right here. And you can see that normal business is right there. See right there? So this is page 278. But again, write whatever page it is for you. So this is page 278 for us right there. I apparently missed out on the page number reference there. Okay, so this is different. This is using the null hypothesis value. These two don't have null hypothesis values because there aren't any values over here because these will all be letters. The only one that becomes a number is P0. So that's why you have to use P1 hat and P2 hat and Q1 hat and Q2 hat. Now for technology. I'm worried that if I write this in blue, it'll be too hard to read. So let me go with like a light blue here. And it's on those same pages. So if you look at 276 and 278, they have it right there. So 276 says technology. You're going to do... Um, oh, sorry, this is 278. Stat, proportion stat, two sample with summary. That's the chapter 11 one. The chapter 10 one is stat, proportion stat, one sample with summary. That's the big difference between the two. Okay, so let me write that. So stat, prop, stat, prop, stat. I'm too lazy to write proportions. This is one sample. That's the key with summary. Right. This one will be stat prop stat two sample with summary. Okay, so that's the key difference. I mean, one, two. I can highlight them. Right. So this one is for one group. This one's for two, but they're all for proportions. Now, if you're on a TI-84, feel free to write your tech. So for a TI-84, this one's a one prop proportion, Z test. And this one, a TI-84, would be a two prop Z test. Oops, sorry, I ran out of space there. And there you have it. All right, so there's the proportion ones all thought of. Now we have to think about the mean ones. <laughs> They're a bit more involved. Okay, so we have three different mean ones. We have the one we learned back in chapter 10, which let me go to it. It's 10, 3. It's right here. The hypothesis test for a single mean, right? And then, which is for me on page 277. And then skip over the proportion one, because that's different, and go down to this one for matched pairs and this one for two different se separate groups, right? The difference between two independent means. All right, so we got to write those. So let's get back in here. So these are all different from each other. So I'm just debating about how I want to do this. Um, I'll do single mean right here, just like I did for, for confidence intervals. So this is for a single mean, and I'm going to give that its page. For me, it's page 277. Write whatever page it is for you, but for me, it's page 277. That was section 10.3. All right, so that'll be relatively easy because it's going to be um, the mean. It'll talk about average. It could have the standard deviation given to you, or if it has a data table given to you, but all for one group. That's key. This is all for one group. So it could have a data table, but it'll all be only one group, and that's it. So one group, that's this one. But it'll talk about average. It'll have standard deviation in there, or it have the data table in there. All right, so the hypotheses for this are that your mean is equal to some value. And again, that's a number, just like with P0. Matter of fact, let me highlight those. 
this one is a number and this one is a number. The rest are not. Those are the only ones that you have to figure out an actual number for from the given context. Actually, let me kind of write that one second. There, I just kind of added that in. Those two are the only ones that'll be numbers. Everything else is going to be letters, right? Other than, you know, one and two, but that doesn't count. Those are really just indexes. So mu zero and P zero are the values that are assumed to be true in the null hypothesis. And there'll be some number that you can assume based on the context. All right, now just as before with means, I can give it to you that it's normal, right? It can be given. There could be a graph, which is a normal probability plot where you're looking to see if the points are linear. Or n can be greater than or equal to 30. Right? That's the way. It's been that way since chapter 8, section 8.1, and it's still that way. <laughs> it says it right here, right? n greater than 30. Graph shows normal with no outliers. I didn't mention the given, but I could just give it to you, and then you don't have to prove anything. And it's just assumed. Now, the technology is right here. So it's stat, t stat, one sample, or if you're in a calculator, it's t test. So let me write that. And I'm, I'm worried about my options here, but I don't have a lot of colors, so I'm just going to have to do it. So this is stat, t stat, one sample. And then you're going to have to choose data if you have a data table or summary if you don't. Right, so one of those two. Now, if you're on a TI 84, it would be t test. Simple as that. So that's pretty straightforward. But again, don't bother writing that if, if you're not interested in the TI 84. <laughs> right, that's just for in case anybody's using it. 